instant credibility. <laughs> Hey, what's up everybody? Marcus Philly here from Functional Bodybuilding. Do you want to build a strong, functional, and most importantly, a sexy back without needing $10,000 of machines? I think most people associate back exercises with things like the lat pull down, the seated cable row, the hammer strength machine, and other expensive pieces of commercial gym equipment. If you have access to these, then more power to you. They're terrific at targeting for upper back muscles and the lats. But if you don't have access to these machines, then guess what? Let me show you how to use functional bodybuilding to target the upper back. We'll use common functional fitness tools that are incredibly inexpensive and are also readily available to most gyms out there. Now, if you've been neglecting your back exercises and training, then you're not alone. It is so common to see an emphasis placed on the squat, the deadlift, and the press as the primary lifts utilized in developing overall strength. Of those, the deadlift is great at developing the back, but it doesn't cover the full picture of back development. If you're only hitting your deadlifts, squats, and presses, then you're definitely leaving a lot on the table for back training. You gotta stop neglecting other back specific exercises. But why, Marcus? What are the benefits of incorporating back exercises for functional fitness and aesthetics? The first point is called structural balance. When we're training, we have to counteract all of the pushing and forward shoulder postures of our everyday lives. See, it's important to think about training joints evenly from front to back and from side to side. If we don't do this, we can develop overuse injuries, pain, dysfunction, C-strength plateaus, and ultimately just get in the way of consistent, healthy training. Furthermore, if one side of our joint gets overly developed as compared to the other side, we'll start to see aesthetic asymmetries that are generally agreed upon as undesirable, like severely rolled forward or hunched forward shoulders from doing far too much pressing and not enough pulling. On the aesthetic side, have you ever seen somebody with a V taper to their upper body? That's when there's this appearance of like a broader shoulder and a narrower waist. How about somebody with like a really well-defined upper back? We all know that person in the gym or at the beach or at the pool or outside wearing a dress where you can see all the muscles of their back. Back training helps develop the lats, which is gonna to add to that appearance of this taper down towards the waist. And these other back exercises are essential for getting that chiseled upper back look. Why are these important exercises getting left out? Why do you see so much more deadlifting, squatting, and pressing going on? Well, I believe equipment and lack of creativity is at fault. See, part of the reason we see so much deadlift, squat, and press done in fitness programs and functional fitness gyms in particular is because these exercises, they can all be done with a barbell and plates. These tools, barbell and plates, are often the most prevalent piece of equipment inside functional fitness gyms or boxes. So when fancy machines aren't available, many coaches and athletes just don't know how to make back training happen. Over the years, I've been programming a wide variety of back training exercises into my functional bodybuilding programs. The idea was to explore a lot of ways to train the upper back and lats with common fitness tools inside of functional fitness gyms because that's what I had access to. How could we use barbells, plates, kettlebells, bands, ropes, rings to complete the tasks that these commercial gym equipment pieces do with these thousands and thousands of dollars of machines. So go ahead, follow along with me as I show you how to go beyond just a simple pull up in the programming and utilize a wider variety of exercises that cover the whole upper back. Now, while the pull up is a solid back developer, there is a plethora of other exercises that mesh perfectly with functional fitness programming. Now lastly, before I jump into this eight exercise breakdown, be sure to jump down to the description below and download the free functional bodybuilding back day workout PDF that I've created to highlight these movements in a full on start to finish FBB workout just for you. Okay, what follows from here on out are exercises that are gonna build your back and I'm gonna teach you how to do them well, so let's dive in. Movement number one is the weighted lean away pull up negative. Overloading muscle tissue is a powerful way to develop strength and aesthetic. 
One way to accomplish this is by focusing on negative reps only and adding more weight than you could possibly otherwise lift in the upward or concentric phase of an exercise. The pull-up is a classic back exercise that requires no expensive equipment, but this variation that I'm showing you might be new to you. The lean away pull-up is a unique variation that makes it very easy to target upper back muscles because of the angle that you're lowering yourself down at. It's also great for targeting rotator cuff muscles as well. I suggest you start with body weight before adding load, and you're gonna execute this by jumping to the top of your pull-up, hold yourself briefly, then start leaning back as far as you can and lowering slowly. All right, the second exercise is the RNT single arm dumbbell row. This variation of the single arm dumbbell row is a terrific way to help bias the engagement of the lats when you row. The technique here is to pull the dumbbell back toward the hip. So you're gonna be pulling against the resistance of the band as well as the resistance of the dumbbell. Think of trying to create an arcing motion with the dumbbell as you row from underneath the shoulder back towards your hip. Again, this will place a greater emphasis on the lat as compared to other variations of the row that we'll highlight today. Next up is the landmine neon bench elbow and row. Landmines are no more than just a barbell stuck in the corner of the squat rack or the room. You can even prop them against a heavy dumbbell or between two weight plates. I love the landmine as it really simulates a machine. It provides some stability, but at the same time, it's gonna give you the same freedom of motion that you would see in a free weight. This variation on the row is gonna give the back of the shoulder and the rotator cuff more targeted work than the previous example. I want you to pull your elbow out to the side of your body perpendicular to the torso. You're likely not gonna be as strong in this position as in the previous row and variation that I showed you with the dumbbell. So load accordingly so that you can really feel those muscles on the back of your shoulder and your, your rotator cuff working. Moving on, we're gonna cover the single arm rope pull-up. This pull-up variation is yet another way that we can approach back training in a unique way using some functional fitness tools like the rope. When we use ropes for pull-ups, we get two benefits. The first is the added grip challenge, which means that while we're training our back, we're also gonna be training our forearms and our biceps aggressively. The other benefit is that by having one hand on top of the other, and depending on how much distance in between them, we're gonna get this unilateral pull-up training effect. And this is gonna emphasize one side of the back more than the other. A note on this is that the further your hands are apart, the harder the pull-up is going to be. So if you're new to this exercise, keep your hands very close together. And if you're more advanced and you wanna challenge yourself on each side, spread the hands apart. Next up is the banded kettlebell pullover. Hey, if you don't have a cable machine to perform pullovers or straight arm lat pulldowns, this is a terrific way to rig up a similar exercise. Some people will argue that this movement targets the chest, but there's no question that there is also a considerable lat component to this movement as well. If you use this variation with the kettlebell and the band and orient your grip this way, it does target the back quite well. The band in this case is supplying tension in the horizontal direction so that even at the top of the rep, when the kettlebell is right over your chest, you are still under tension. For this exercise, I like to perform it on a slight incline bench if possible. It allows me to support my whole back and get a better stretch in my lats. Next up is the supinated band pull apart. Talk about simplicity of equipment. All you need is a thin band and you can go to town. This movement can be done with hands in the supinated or pronated position, but in my experience, the supinated grip is ideal for upper back and rotator cuff training. The trick is finding the sweet spot of tension in this exercise. So you wanna be able to get a full range of motion where you can get your arms all the way out to the side while you're under just enough tension that you can crank out somewhere between 15 to 25 reps. Play around with the width of your grip on the band to find that sweet spot. Next up is the single arm ring body row. Rings have become more and more available in functional fitness gyms, and they make great tools for back training. Closed chain exercises, the pull-up being one of them in this category, are when your body serves as a load and you move yourself through space with a fixed hand or foot position. The single arm ring row provides a great option for a closed chain back exercise. It's gonna allow for a long range of motion as well. 
Unilateral training, biasing one side of the body through a long range of motion is a great recipe for hypertrophy and strength development. This variation that I'm showing involves pulling and rotation to cover that large group of muscles on the upper back and the shoulder blade. Moving on to the final exercise, we're gonna cover the sled drag face pull. This exercise was introduced to me in 2016, and I used it all the time back in the early years of developing functional bodybuilding. I love it because it takes a tool that's otherwise thought of for lower body training only, and it turns it into an effective back exercise. This is also unique in that there is no eccentric or lowering portion of this lift. It's all concentric. Without that eccentric load, you can perform more reps over a longer distance, and you get a very unique type of strength and hypertrophy benefit. This exercise could be performed seated or standing, and as you're performing the reps, keeping your elbows high and wide for this drill is gonna help you target your upper back and traps. So the next time you're doing pressing day in the gym, consider throwing one to two of these exercises in as a way to balance your shoulder work. Or if you're gonna go have a squat heavy day and you wanna do some supersets with back exercises between leg exercises, all of these can be great options. And finally, let's say you're doing a heavy deadlift day to build up your back and your posterior chain. Then you might wanna supplement with a handful of these accessory exercises to make sure you're covering all your bases. In Persist, my functional bodybuilding subscription program, we're blending back training throughout the week all the time. We have push and pull upper body days, we've got squat and pull full body days, and then we have hinging, otherwise known as deadlift days, with pulling upper back accessory. So if you wanna see for yourself, check the link in the description below and go grab a two week free trial of my Persist training program, which is gonna give you start to finish, done for you, full programming in a variety of different tracks, depending on your goals. And while you're down there in the description, don't forget, download your free functional bodybuilding back day PDF and go hit this workout today. And lastly, thanks for joining me. I always appreciate your attention and your time. I welcome your comments down below. Please tell me what you'd like to see in the future. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, drop me a comment, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.